Hello and welcome to this video webinar of Safetica Technologies. My name is Michael Kraft. I'm a senior technical advisor and I'll be your tour guide on the product demonstration today. During this presentation, you'll get a first-hand look at how Safetica operates and how you can use it to protect your business's data. But before we get into the product demonstration, I'd like to talk a little bit about our company background and the need for a data leak prevention software in the current market. So let's start off with who we are. Safetica has been around since 2009. We are a Gartner-recognized organization and have over 50 full-time employees with customers across the globe. Now, if we take a quick look at a handful of some of our customers, obviously some of these are recognizable names. And looking over this list, you may think to yourself, okay, great, the Microsoft Innovation Center uses your product or the Coca-Cola bottling plan, but what does that have to do with me? Chances are you're a small to medium-sized business. And if so, you're in the right place. Safetica was designed for the small to medium-sized market, allowing you to have the same tools that an enterprise solution can provide without the hefty price tag. And when we look at this next slide, more specifically the chart on the left-hand side, the numbers that we see next to each one of these industries is the amount of money that they lose per record that's leaked. And this applies to the small to medium-sized market more than ever. When we look at the very top of this list, with healthcare, for example, if they're losing $355 for every record that leaks, if one record leaks, chances are multiple records have leaked. Even a small practice will have thousands of medical records. And if those records were to all leak at once, chances are that hit could easily put them out of business. And if that initial hit doesn't, there's residual effects. And we'll get to those in just a few moments. So making sure that leaks like this don't occur within your own organization is extremely important. Now, there are many ways that a record can leave an organization. Now, it could be an outside attempt from a hacker, and there's plenty of tools that you can utilize to prevent attacks such as this from occurring, whether it is a firewall or maybe endpoint security software. But what these tools don't prevent against is the inside threat, an employee within your own organization. Now, one thing to keep in mind, not all data leaks are malicious attempts. It could be an honest mistake made by a good hardworking employee. But in this scenario, we're gonna look at the opposite. We're gonna look at a malicious employee who purposefully is trying to extract company data. And usually, when we see these disgruntled employees extracting information, there's a typical life cycle involved and it usually begins with the loss of productivity. The employee is no longer happy with their job and they're bored at work. So they're doing other things to occupy their time, spending less time in work applications and more time on non-productive tasks like watching videos or browsing Facebook. Then we see a shift in behavior to job search. These employees have a certain skill set and they know what they're good at. So they're trying to find a job that's similar to what they're currently in. Maybe at a company down the street, or maybe they're posting their resume on a job search site online. Then we begin to see the copying of company data. Could be to a personal flash drive or email account. Could be an upload to a cloud drive. But at this point, it's already too late. That employee has already stolen your company's information and has now moved on to their new job, and they're using that to their advantage. So not only do we want to be able to block that user from extracting the company data, but seeing those red flags pop up as they occur is equally as important. Now you may think to yourself, well, I have my data secured in certain locations on our network, but on average, 80% of company data is unstructured. So employees have access to a lot of information that could hurt you if it leaves your company. So what does this mean to you? What kind of data is considered a sensitive document? It could be confidential information if it's leaked out to a competitor. It could be contracts. It could be customer sales lists. It could be legally protected data. There's all kinds of information within your company that can harm you if it leaves the organization. So what happens when you do have an inside threat within your organization? With access to all kinds of data, such as trade secrets or social security numbers or bank account numbers. Well, they can leak it 
using a flash drive, personal email, cloud drives, etc. And then they can leak it out to a competitor or maybe the media. And at that point, you have residual effects that you have to deal with. Your company name has been tarnished. There could be legal liabilities that you have to deal with. And it could even result in you having to close your business. Now, there are multiple fronts that you have to face when data leaves your organization. Initially, you have the legal ramifications, paying those hefty fines for violating a regulation such as HIPAA. And then, of course, it can tarnish your reputation. For example, if you're a healthcare organization and your patient's data leaks, you have to inform those patients that their files have been leaked. So chances are you'll lose some of your current clientele, but then it also damages your reputation for future clients, which of course is a loss of competitive edge for your business. So what can you do to protect your company's sensitive documents? That's where Safetica comes in. Safetica is the complete protection against human failure. And we do this by predicting the risks that could be involved and measuring employee activity. And then we put plans in place to prevent these occurrences from happening. So with Safetica, you get an entire product suite. Now at the heart of our solution is our data leak prevention. But then we have other tools that work together with the data leak prevention to help secure your company's information and to monitor employee behaviors. At Safetica, our approach is simple. We want to help your company prevent data from leaving the organization but at the same time, we do not want to disrupt your employees' day-to-day -day activities. So we work with you to create plans that work into your business model to ensure that employees can continue to work as they always have. And the only time they should be interrupted is when they're trying to extract information that should not be leaving the company. So let's take a look at the Safetica solution and see how it works firsthand. What we're looking at right now is the Safetica Management Console. This is the part of the solution that you'll use to set up all of your policies to prevent employees from extracting information and also where you can set up your different levels of monitoring to see what's going on within your organization. Now, whenever you log into the Safetica Management Console, you'll start off in the dashboard and the dashboard is a good place to start because the dashboard is your thousand foot view into everything that's going on. So immediately, you can see what applications have been used, who are your top web users, email flow, top visited websites, or print traffic. Now this dashboard is completely customizable. For example, if you don't need to see the print monitor timeline, you can remove it and then add another chart that you do want to see. So I'm gonna add the DLP protocol top actions. Another great thing about this dashboard is all of the charts are interactive. So if there is an issue that you need to address, you don't need to dig around the product to manage the issue. You can go straight to it from the dashboard. Looks like I've had a user that was denied from doing something that I want to know about. So I can click on it in the dashboard and it takes me to the section of the product that correlates with that chart. But for now, I'm going to go back to the dashboard. Now the information that we're viewing here can be viewed by day, week, month, or even a specific date range. You can also view this information globally by group or even at an individual user or device level. So if there is an employee, that you wanted to take a closer look at, you can do so directly from this dashboard. But like I said a few moments ago, this dashboard is a thousand foot overview. It's a good starting point. There will be times where you need to take a closer look. Take out that magnifying glass and really inspect what's going on. All of that is going to be done in the Safetica Auditor. The Safetica solution is broken up into different components and each component with its own special purpose. With Auditor, it's strictly monitoring. Auditor is your data collection piece. It's giving you insight into what's going on with the company. We're not putting any plans in place at this point. We're just taking a look and seeing what's going on. So the first thing I wanna take a look at is files. I wanna know if anybody within my company is trying to extract data, and if they are, what methods are they using? Now immediately, the charts are going to let me know who my most active users are, and which actions occurred and when they occurred. So just from the charts, I can see that Edward Walker has copied a bunch of files, and I can even see when he copied those. If I want to take a closer look, I can narrow down my search to look at exact dates. And at the bottom of the screen, I have all my details. So beyond just knowing that Edward copied a bunch of files and when he copied them, 
Now I can see what computer he was logged into, what file he copied, where he copied this file from, when he copied the file, and where he sent the file to. So in this scenario, Edward transferred a bunch of files to a flash drive. So I already know that I probably need to put a plan in place to prevent this from happening in the future. But I also want to know if Edward used any other methods to extract data. So I can filter my search. So now I want to know if Edward used a cloud drive. So I'm going to add cloud drive only to my search. And luckily he did not use a cloud drive to extract any information, which is good. But at the same time, I know that I'll probably need to put a plan in place in the future to prevent this from happening if Edward ever tries to use a cloud drive. Now another way that data can leave a company is through an email. This could be a malicious attempt, or it could even be an accident, where an employee attaches a file that they're meaning to send to a coworker, but accidentally send it outside of the organization. Now that employee is at risk for losing their job for a mistake that they didn't mean to make, and they could even cost the company some money. So when we look at emails, mine is already filtered to show me which messages contain attachments, so I don't have to filter through a bunch of messages that I don't need to look at. But you can filter this information however you like, whether it's all the information at once, or maybe by username, or even username and contains attachments. The reason I stick with just contains attachments is our charts are also interactive. So if I did want to go one employee at a time, all I have to do is click on that employee's name, expand next to contains attachments, and now I can see every single message that Lucy sent out with a document attached to it. With the email monitoring, we can see the sender and the recipient. We can see the subject of the message. If there was a file attached to the message, we can click on the details to find out what file was attached and who that message went out to. So in this scenario, Lucy sent out one document to three separate recipients. So I probably want to put a plan in place to ensure that company documents that have sensitive information cannot be attached to emails leaving the company. Now we saw previously that Edward Walker was using a flash drive to extract information. But I want to know which employees are plugging in external drives to see who else is at risk. So when I move to devices, now I can see every employee that plugged in an external device. Now a lot of this is information that I don't necessarily need to look at. For example, I don't need to worry about monitors being plugged in or, or keyboards or even a mouse. But what I am concerned about is mass storage and maybe even cameras and scanners. So once again, the charts are interactive. I can narrow my search to find exactly what I'm looking for. So now I know every single employee that plugged in an external device. I can see device identification and I can see when they plugged it in. Now there are other items in Auditor that we'll come back and take a look at a little bit later. But for now, I'm gonna jump into the next component of Safetica. DLP. DLP is the part of the solution that we use to prevent employees from extracting company information. We can put security policies in place to prevent data leaks from occurring. Now all of this begins with file tagging. With Safetica, we need to determine which files we need to protect. And we do this by tagging those documents. Now we allow you to tag files based on filtering rules that you set. It could be file location, it could be file extension, keywords in the file name, website where the file originated, or application that created the file. And you can combine these rules in whatever way you need to to ensure that your documents are secure. And when a file has been tagged by Safetica, there's no removing that tag locally. So even if the user moves the file to a new location or they change the file name or even change the file extension, none of that matters because that tag will follow it wherever it goes as long as it stays within your network. Another thing, users don't know that files are tagged. There's no way to know that there is a tag associated with the file by looking at it on the local machine. And the only way a tag can be removed is in the Safetica console. But now tagging the files is just your first step. That just lets Safetica know these are the documents that we need to protect in the future, but we still need to figure out how we're going to protect those files and from whom. So let's move over to the DLP rules. DLP rules 
can be applied at the global level, group level, or even at an individual user device level. We understand that not every single company is the same and different users will need to have different policies applied to them. For example, maybe management needs to have additional access to files that other employees do not need to have. So we can create separate policies for management and everybody else. So let's take a look at one security policy and see how we can prevent employees from extracting information. So this policy has specific files that it applies to and also has employees that it applies to. And if those employees want to save these files locally, we can allow that. It is their work computer. We don't want to disrupt their workflow. Or we can customize set paths where they may or may not be allowed to store these documents. We can block employees from saving these files to an external drive or even printing the documents. Now on network and email, I'm going to leave both of these on zone because I really like the zone approach, especially with these two items. First, let's look at emails. Maybe you need to be able to send these sensitive documents internally, but you do not want employees to attach them to emails leaving the company. Well, a simple or allow or deny is not good enough for that. You need to take it a step further. So with zones, you can create a zone with your company domain or even specific users and make sure that it's set to allow so employees can send these documents to each other. But as soon as someone attaches one of these documents to an email that is leaving the company, it'll be denied. And sometimes that's not good enough. Maybe you have third parties that you work with, contract employees, or other users outside of the organization that need special rights to some of these documents. Well, in those scenarios, you can add their email addresses to a zone or even their own full domain and ensure that as long as a user is in that zone, they are allowed to receive emails with these documents attached to it, but anybody that is not in that zone will be denied. Now, I also like the zone approach on network because there may be certain areas within your own local network or wide area network or even web uploads where you, employees are supposed to store these sensitive documents, but there could be other areas where you do not want them to store them, maybe on a shared folder within a network drive. So you can set zones of allowed network items or even not allowed network items. Once again, ensuring that an employee is following the rules that you have set, they can store the files no problem. But as soon as they violate one of your policies, Safe to Code will deny that. So as you can see, setting policies in Safe to Code is pretty simple. You scroll the bar to the option that you want to utilize and that's it. But you do have one other choice beyond allow and deny. You also have notify. With notify, the user receives a warning, letting them know that the action that they're about to take is against the company's security policy. But if they wish to continue, they still can. This way, we're not restricting the user. We're just warning them. Now, if a user continues, you will still be notified as well. So you know when these actions have occurred. So let's take a look at a couple examples on a local device when a user tries to violate a safety policy. So I have a document that is secured by Safetica and it immediately lets me know in the bottom right corner with the icons from Safetica letting me know what I'm not allowed to do. But I'm going to ignore those warnings. And I'm going to try to extract data anyway. So the first thing I'm going to try to do is copy to the clipboard. Now I can still hit right click and copy because I can still paste within the same document. But as soon as I open up a notepad and try to paste it in here, paste is grayed out. I cannot move this information. So since I can't do that, I'm going to try to hit my print screen button and take a screenshot of this file. As soon as I do that, I get a notification letting me know that screen capture is blocked. So now I'm going to try to get creative and use my snipping tool. As soon as I hit new, it grays out my screen, it blacks out my selection, so that is absolutely useless to me. So I'm going to try one other item. I'm going to try to copy the entire file and move it to an unsecured location. So I'm going to right click on the file and I'm going to copy it. 
it will still allow me to copy the file because I'm still working within my local computer. But as soon as I try to send it to a location that's not allowed, file transfer is blocked, no surprise. As a user, I can click on this dialog box for more information to find out why I'm being blocked. So in this example, I was blocked from moving this file because it is a financial file and it was blocked for security reasons. And it lets me know that this is not a secure place for this file. It still gives me other locations where I can securely store this document on my computer. And it also lets me know that this was against my company's security policy and my action was logged. Now you can add additional information at the bottom if you so choose to. You can put your own company email address on there if you'd like, or even your own company logo. This way users can contact you if they feel like they were wrongfully blocked. Now I mentioned earlier how we also have the notification feature, which just warns the user when they do something they shouldn't be doing. So let's take a look at what that looks like. So I have a folder here with documents that I've tagged by Safetica. I'm gonna to try to upload them to Skype. So as soon as I try to insert the image into my Skype, I get a notification from Safetica. Now I can upload regardless, or I can stop doing what I'm doing and go back. So with this example, I'm gonna select do not open, and I can see that there was a problem sending the file. So let's go back to the Safetica console and continue with the demo. Now the next tab over under DLP protocol, you can choose what gets logged and what does not get logged within the Safetica console. And then you can view this information at any time by switching to visualization mode. So if there was an incident where a user tried to extract data, you could view it directly from here. So in this example, David Brown tried to open a bunch of files that he is not supposed to access. So I may need to address this issue. And if I need to get information over to somebody else, I can extract this as a PDF or as an XLS document. Now earlier I mentioned zones when it came to network and email, but zones can incorporate a lot of other items as well. You can have as many zones as you need within Safetica and add multiple items to zones, whether it's printers or email or network paths, or even external devices. We'll use this as an example in this demo. Maybe your company has company owned flash drives and employees need to be able to use these flash drives to transfer information. But you do not want them bringing in their personal flash drives. This can be a bit of a headache for IT. You can't lock down the USB drives completely because then those employees cannot bring in their company owned drives. But then if you don't lock down USB, then you have to worry about personal drives coming in and either extracting data or even worse, causing damage to your network. So with Safetica, you can set a zone of allowed flash drives while blocking anything that's outside of that zone. Now to start this process, we have to add the company on flash drives. We can do this automatically by plugging in the flash drive, manually by inserting the drive's information, or we can go through a list of unassigned items where flash drives have been plugged in previously and were never assigned to a zone. So for example, I can select all these drives and add them to my Office 01 zone. So now when I go into device control to restrict users from bringing in their personal drives, I can say that any drive in that Office 01 zone is allowed. But if a drive is outside of that zone, it'll be denied. This way we can easily block users from bringing in personal drives while still allowing company drives to be used within the organization. But it's not restricted to just USB devices. This can be applied to card readers, phones, tablets, cameras, CD, DVD drives, or even Bluetooth devices. And you have multiple settings to choose from for each different type of device. Now the final piece to the DLP side of things is encryption. With Safetica, we utilize BitLocker technology for our encryption, and we allow you to easily manage it through the Safetica console. You can push down BitLocker encryption to multiple devices at once. You can also use different methods of encryption, whether it's TPM, TPM and PIN, or a password. And if you are pushing down encryption to all of your devices and say you select TPM, but you have one or two machines that TPM is not available on, 
you can use a password as an alternative. And if you've used BitLocker technology previously to encrypt your devices, you can have SafeTika take over that BitLocker encryption and allow you to manage it through the SafeTika console. Now, when you do manage the device within SafeTika using BitLocker technology, all the security keys will be stored securely within your SafeTika databases. But you can also export them as an XLS document or even save them to Active Directory, allowing you to easily manage your encryption using SafeTika. And if you are using company-owned flash drives, you can encrypt those as well through SafeTika. To make sure that if an employee loses one of these drives or it gets stolen, you don't have to worry about someone accessing your company information on that flash drive. It'll be inaccessible if it is plugged into a device that is not secured with SafeTika. So that was the DLP side of SafeTika. Now let's move back to the auditor to see a few of the other monitoring features. And we'll start off in applications. SafeTika keeps track of application usage on every machine that's installed on. You can see what applications were used the most and what employees are the most active within those applications and even see active time. So in this example, George Weber is my most active user. So I can click on his name and find out what applications he is using the most. Now looking at the charts, I can see that he's used AutoCAD for quite a bit of his time, which is good because he is in my design team and he should be spending time on AutoCAD. I can also see that he spent a lot of time on Google Chrome. Now Google Chrome is a web browser and web browsers can be a gray area. Time on web browsers can be spent productively, but can also be non-productive. And we'll take a closer look at that in just a few moments. But I want to highlight another way that the auditor can be used within SafeTika application monitoring. Say you have an expensive application and you want to make sure that your employees are using it properly. In this example, I'll use 3D design software because 3D design software can be quite costly. So when I narrow down my search to 3D design software and see AutoCAD in here, I can see how much time each employee spent within AutoCAD within a month's period of time. And I can see that I had one employee only spend a minute and 14 seconds in there. So this lets me know that either A, that employee is not productive and we need to have a talk, or B, that employee doesn't need access to AutoCAD. So now we can either get rid of that license and save the company some money, or we can reallocate that license to another user that does need access to AutoCAD. Now we saw earlier that George Weber spent a lot of time on Google Chrome. I want to know what sites he's going to on Google Chrome. I want to know if he's productive or not. So let's move over to websites. So in websites, I can see that George Weber is my most active user. So I want to know what he's doing. So I'm going to click on his name and now I can see that he is not being very productive on Google Chrome. He spent most of his time on YouTube, games, Facebook, and sports. And in the top categories, I can see that Leisure is at the top. And when I click on Leisure, I can see that he spent over 20 hours on YouTube alone. Social networks, he spent five and a half hours on Facebook alone. With SafeTika, we only monitor active time on websites. So for example, he only spent 11 seconds on this site on Facebook. So when a report comes out that shows you active web time, you can be more confident knowing how much time employees are spending on different sites. If I saw one report that showed that two employees were on Facebook, but I didn't know how much time they both spent, I would probably assume that both employees are non-productive. But if I see a SafeTika report that shows me that George Weber spent five and a half hours on Facebook and Donald Taylor only spent 30 seconds, that's quite different. Maybe Donald got on there, he checked a message or looked at a post real quick and then he got back to work. I'm not too concerned with that. But what I am concerned with is George Weber spending a very large amount of time on Facebook. Now we'll look at one other item in the auditor for now, and that's print. The print allows me to see what employees are utilizing the printers within the organization, what printers they're using, what documents they're printing, and whether these documents are being printed in black and white or color. Maybe we have a company policy restricting users to print in black and white, but I have users printing personal documents in color. 
I can see that very easily through Safetica. So after looking at application usage and website usage and what employees are printing documents, we'll move into the final component of Safetica, and that's supervisor. The supervisor component allows me to have more control over employee productivity by allowing or denying use of specific applications or access to websites or even printers. So we'll start off in web control. Now, just like we saw in DLP, supervisor policies can be applied at multiple levels, whether it's global, group, or even individual. We can create allow and deny lists, and we can block specific websites, web categories, or even IP addresses. So for this demonstration, I want to block social networks. So I'll hit add. I'll find social networks on my search and hit the checkbox. It's that simple. If you ever want to see what sites are in a category, you can click on the category and it will show you the sites. Or if you want to look up a site, just type it in the search bar and it will tell you what category that site falls under. So in this example, I looked for LinkedIn. Now LinkedIn is categorized as a social network, but some companies use it as a business tool. But if we're blocking social networks, we'll be blocking employees from accessing LinkedIn. So with Safetica, you can either recategorize a site or create a brand new category and move that site into that new category. This way, employees can still access sites like LinkedIn while being blocked if they try to access other social networks. And if you do block employees from going to certain sites with Safetica, you can choose what notifications they see. Whether it is a standard default access to this page was restricted by Safetica, or a message from the web browser saying this page cannot be reached. Or you can create your own custom page and just have them redirected to whatever site you want to send them to, whether it's your own company website, or maybe even a customized block page. So let's take a look at what happens when an employee tries to access a site that you've blocked with Safetica. Now I have mine set to the default page from the web browser, so it should look like the website is unreachable. So when I try to go to facebook.com, the web browser lets me know that this page isn't working. So as a user, I would probably assume that this page is down, but it was actually because it was blocked by Safetica. So let's go to application control, the next piece of supervisor. In application control, it's very similar to the web control. You can create allow and deny lists for specific applications or application categories. For example, if I don't want my employees to play games while they're at work, I can block the entire category and make sure that any game they try to launch will be blocked by Safetica. Within my environment, we have Skype blocked. So when I go to launch the Skype application, I get the same type of Safetica pop-up that I would if I tried to extract company data. And then the final piece of supervisor is print control. Within print control, you can limit which printers employees have access to, whether it's physical printers, plugged into their computers, network printers, or even virtual printers. You can create allow and deny lists for different users or even different groups within your organization. And if a user does have access to a printer, you can set quotas for them, whether it's per day, week, or even month, to ensure that employees are not abusing their print privileges. When working with Safetica, the majority of your time will be within these three components, auditor, DLP, and supervisor. Initially, auditor collecting data, gathering information to help you create your policies in the future. And then during the DLP phase, testing out different policies to make sure that employees can still work just as they normally have, but will be blocked whenever they try to do something they shouldn't be doing. And then supervisor, ensuring that employees are staying productive while they're at work. But once you have these policies in place and everything's working as it should be, you don't need to open up the Safetica console every day. We also have tools to ensure that you can stay out of Safetica unless a change needs to occur. So let's take a look at those tools now. First, we have alerts. 
With Savetica, you can create as many alert rules as you need to and customize each one of those alert rules. This way, you're notified of things that you need to see without receiving an inbox full of Savetica alerts that aren't of any value. The Savetica alerts are broken up into categories. We have security alerts, which are all tied directly to the policies that you've set in either DLP or supervisor. For example, if I wanted to be notified if someone sent out one of my financial documents via email, I could set it up right here. Informative alerts are not tied into your safe ticket policies, but are still items you may need to know about. Red flags that could indicate that a data leak incident could occur in the future. For example, time spent on web categories. I want to know if somebody's looking for a new job because that could be an indication of a future data leak incident. Or files moved or copied to a USB disk. These might not be sensitive documents, but still could be a red flag that an employee will try to extract sensitive information in the future. And then we also have service alerts, which are all alerts that are tied in directly to the Safetica product. Next, you choose which users you want to be alerted on, and then select who to notify via email. You can also send the alerts to the console, so that way every time you open up Safetica, you can see that there's some alerts out there, or even send them to a SIM or a syslog. Now reporting is almost identical to the alerts, the way you configure the reports. You can have as many reports as you like. You can select from default layouts that we provide to you. You can also create your own custom layouts. Once you've selected the information that you want to have included in the reports, you can choose which users are included in the reports and even set time intervals, and then choose who to send the reports to via email. Safetica reports can be generated as both PDF or XLS documents. You can save them locally, and you can generate reports daily, weekly, monthly, quarterly, or twice a year. But if you need to see an on-demand report, you can do that as well. For example, if I wanted to see the information from my quarterly summary for the last week, I could do it directly from the console and not wait until that quarterly summary comes out. Now I mentioned SafeTicker reports can be generated as both PDF and XLS documents, and they are drastically different when you look at them. So let's take a look at two examples of the exact same SafeTicker report. First example being the PDF version. This is an application usage report. Now when I go through this report, it's very easy to read, colorful charts, and not a lot of details. I can see my most used applications and my most active users and even a timeline of when they're using the applications the most. But now the exact same report generated as an XLS document is quite different. The XLS report is very detailed. This is a great report to generate if you have an audit coming up or a regulator that needs to see very specific details or worst case scenario, if you had a data leak incident and needed to pinpoint more information on which employee was extracting information. In this report, for example, I can go line by line and find out every single application that was used, when the applications were used, what employee used them, what computer they were on, and how long they spent in the application. Now the final component that we'll take a look at in this demonstration is Web Safetica. Web Safetica is easy to set up and configure and can even be done during the initial installation of Safetica. Web Safetica allows you to view all the same information that we just looked at within that Safetica management console without actually logging into the server where Safetica is located or even installing the console on your own machine. All you have to do is pull up a web browser and put in the URL for Web Safetica. With Web Safetica, even though you can see everything that we looked at within the console, you cannot make any changes. So you can share access with other users within your company, maybe with someone in management, allowing them to see the benefits that Safetica is providing. Web Safetica is easy to navigate. For example, if I wanted to take a closer look at some of these data security incidents, just like within the console, I can click on the chart 
and find out what's been going on. So it looks like we had some incidents involving USB drive. So now I can see which employees tried to extract data via USB, and it looks like Rebecca Rice is at the very top of this list. So when I click on her name, I can take a closer look at what Rebecca Rice is trying to remove from our organization. But maybe I want to take a look at productivity. I want to look at trends in user behavior. And from here, I can see if an employee is going to a site that they shouldn't be going to, or maybe looking for a new job, or maybe using webmail when they should be using Outlook. WebSafeTick also allows you to create your own reports. So this way, if you did have a manager that wants to see information generated in a report, you don't have to go into the SafeTick console or even allow them into the console to generate it. They can do so directly from the website. So that was the SafeTick management console. We also took a look at what the endpoint client looks like and even web safe to cut. Thanks for watching. If you have any additional questions, you can visit our website or call us.